showing the account ID of all those under the ID column and name of the corresponding account under the name column. You can mention as many fields as you want. You can see it is showing a similar result that you get over there on your query editor of the developer console. So right now you can see it is printing individual account records in individual line. So now you can see with this separator, each records are separated and with each record I am easily accessing individual field values like account ID, account name and account type. Hey guys, I am Amit Kumar and welcome to this video in which we are going to have an introduction to SoQL. So without wasting any time further, let's proceed with the video. SoQL is Salesforce object query language, which is a language in Salesforce that is used to retrieve data from the database. Now we can also filter the data which we want using SoQL. You can consider a database as something where the information is stored in Salesforce. This is nothing but various objects in Salesforce. Now query is something that we ask the database and the database understands and gives us data based on the query. Now the format of SQL is like SQL or structured query language. Some of you might be already knowing about SQL. So they can consider SQL as similar to SQL, but SQL is less complex than SQL because it does not support all the advanced features of SQL. SQL is case insensitive. We can retrieve data from a single object or from multiple objects that are related to one another. We can sort results as part of the query. We can retrieve specific fields which are nothing but columns from an object or multiple related objects. Now if you see this is a standard syntax of SQL query. Now I know it seems to be very complex but most of the parts that you can see over here are optional. So if I show you a simpler syntax of it, it would look something like this. There we write down select, which is a SQL statement. Then we can mention the different fields that we want. Then again a statement from. And then we will specify the name of the object from where we want the records of these fields. Now we can specify multiple field names separated by commas. But while specifying the name of the fields and the object name, make sure you have to specify the API name of these fields and not the label of those fields. The same goes for object. We will specify the API name of the object and not the label of the object. Now fields can be from the same object, from a related object or can be an inner query itself. Now we are going to see that in detail later down the line. But in this video, we will see a very simple SQL query. Now we can run SQL from either a developer console using the query editor tab on the developer console. We can run a SQL query from the VS code using the scripts folder of our project and then using a command execute SQL query or we can also run a SQL query in any Apex class or Apex code using square brackets. So it's pretty much of talk and now it's time to see the things practically. And guys, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you want to stay updated with proper Salesforce tutorials and want to watch more tutorials, make sure to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon. Also, if you have thoughts or question, drop it in the comments. I would love to hear from you and promise I will read every single one. Thank you so much, guys. And now you can proceed with the video. Hey guys, welcome to the practical session of introduction to SoQL, SoQL queries and how we can see the output of the result that is returned from the SoQL. So there are basically three ways in which we can do this. First is via the developer console. So let's open the developer console and see that. So click on the gear icon, click on developer console and on the developer console interface, you will have one query editor tab at the bottom. So there will be different tabs over here like logs, tests, checkpoints, query editor, view state, progress and problems. Out of all these tabs, we will write down SoCool query in the query editor. So a syntax of SoCool query says that it should start with select keyword and then we should mention the name of the fields that we want to fetch. So here we will mention the fields name. After the fields, we will mention from and then we will mention the object name from where we want to fetch these fields. So for example, if I want to fetch ID and name field from the account object, then after select and before from, 
I will mention the two fields separated by comma and after from I will mention the name of the object which is account. Once I have written the so called query all that I need to do is to click on this execute button and as soon as you will click on the execute it will show the result of the query over here. You can clearly see it is showing that there are total 13 rows which shows there are total 13 records. It is also showing the account ID of all those under the ID column and name of the corresponding account under the name column. You can mention as many fields as you want. So after name if I also want to fetch type I can certainly do that and I can click on execute and you can see it is showing me a new result in a new tab. I can click on these tabs and in each tab it will show the result as well as the query which is giving that specific result. In case of any error in the query definitely it will not run. For example suppose if I miss this comma after name and before type and if I try to execute this you can clearly see it is showing here only aggregate expression use field aliasing. This is a kind of error okay basically it is mentioning us that if you want to use field aliasing you should go for aggregate expression. Now we will talk about field aliasing and we will talk about aggregate expression later down the line but because of that error it is thinking that here I want to use field aliasing which is not actually true here I have missed that comma. Let's suppose if I add a comma after type and before from and try to execute it it is saying unknown error parsing query. So there is some sort of error which is which it can't tell you but while parsing this query it is facing that specific error. So that's how you can use the query editor window to run a query and see the result of that specific so called query over here. Now the other two ways of running a so called query is uh, you can do that in an apex class using a square bracket and then the result can be utilized as our need. And the third way is running the so-called query using VS code. So I am showing the VS code first and then finally I will show you how to do that with an Apex class. So let's open VS code. Here we are in our VS code and in the VS code we have already created a project. Earlier I have shown you how you can create a project in VS code in one of the tutorials. If you have not seen that specific tutorial you can certainly click at the top right now and go through that specific video. Here we are not focusing on how to create a Salesforce project but if you have already created a Salesforce project the project will give you this scripts folder. Now under the scripts folder there will be a so called folder and under this so called folder there will be a file named as account with an extension .soql. Now you can create as many files like this to store sample so calls over here which you can utilize later on in your project and you can also use it to run and see what will be the result of a specific so called query. Now I am removing all these comments from here and modifying this query. This is a default query that will be provided to you whenever you will open this file. Certainly you can delete it and write down any other query that you want but I want id name and type field from account. Now to execute this so called query I need to give a command over here. And to give that command you can open the command palette. Now to open the command palette you can go to the bottom left and click on this gear icon and click on this command palette. It will open a palette like this. You can open the command palette with the keyboard shortcut as well. The keyboard shortcut on windows operating system is control shift P and if you are on Mac operating system it is command shift P. Once the command palette is open you can write down a statement known as execute so cool. You can see that execute so cool query. Now before opening the command palette what you need to do is you need to select this so cool query and then open the command palette and type in execute. You will get the command execute so cool query with currently selected text. So you need to give this command execute so cool query with currently selected text. Choose rest API. And it will execute the query and show the result to you over here. You can see it, it is showing a similar result that you get over there on your query editor of the developer console. Now if you have written more than one query over here like suppose if I want to fetch first name and last name from contact and if I select both the query and if I 
Open the command palette and click on execute SQL query with currently selected text. Choose REST API. Then you can see I am getting an error execute SQL query failed. So if you are selecting more than one queries like this, definitely it won't be able to show you the output. You have to select one specific SQL query over here and then give this execute SQL query with currently selected text command. Now I have selected the second one and gave that command. You can see the command executed successfully. You have to scroll down on this output window to see the result of the latest query that you have ran. There is an option over here which is shown as this burger with a cross sign which is for clear output. You can choose this option whenever you want to clear this output screen so that every time you can see a fresh output. So I'm giving the same command again and here is your output. Now that's how you can run your SQL query from VS Code. Now let's see how we can run our SQL query in an Apex class. Now SQL queries are basically written so that we can get the result of the SQL query which we can certainly utilize in our Apex class using our own business logic. That's the main purpose of writing down a SQL query. Now the query editor or the VS code anonymous section is basically provided to you so that before working or before writing down the business logic in the class, you can check what the query is resulting to. So these are the places where you can see the result of your SQL query, what that specific SQL query is resulting into. So right now we are doing it with anonymous window of developer console. So I'm opening the anonymous window from the debug menu and here I'm going to write down the same SQL query and the result of that I will fetch in a S object variable. Now the main difference of writing down a SQL query on the query editor and in a class is when you are writing down the SQL query in a class you have to write down in a square bracket. So here if I'm writing down select ID name type from account then I have to write down this in a square bracket. So this is going to return me the records. Definitely I am fetching all the records with these three fields from the account object. So this is going to return me a list of records. And this is list of account records. So to store this list of records, I am going to create a list of account over here. Let me name this list as accounts. And now you can see I have written a SQL query inside square bracket. And the result of this SQL query, I'm storing it in a list of account. Now this list can be printed directly. So let me directly print this list over here. And let me show you the output. For that, let me click on execute, click on debug only. And now you can see it is showing us a list of accounts. Now if you want to work on individual items, definitely you can iterate over this list. We have already discussed about a for loop that can iterate over a collection. So here I'm going to use that for loop. Now the collection over here is accounts. Now you know in this type of for loop, you need to create a temporary variable. So first of all, you will specify a data type, then a temporary variable, then a colon, and then a list or any collection. And this loop will iterate over that specific list, assigning individual element to this temporary variable. So right now I want to iterate over the accounts list. So the data type, of this variable should be account as each element of the list is of account type and definitely I can hold it in a temporary variable. So I'm naming the temporary variable as ACC. So what will happen? All the accounts that are stored in the accounts list, it will iterate over all the records, fetch individual element inside ACC. So one element at a time and then iterate over it. Now I'm just printing that ACC over here and I'm executing it. So right now you can see it is printing individual account records in individual line. Now definitely we have learned about dot notation with the help of which we can access individual fields. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to print the account ID, account name and account type. So account ID and how I'm going to fetch it by using the dot notation on this ACC variable. So ACC dot ID. So it will print all the three fields for one specific record and because it is iterating over all the records so it will print these three values for all the records. Now let me add a small separator over here so that the record should be separated by this separator symbol and for that I am just using dash. Now let me execute this and click on debug only. So now you can see with this separator 
each records are separated and with each record I am easily accessing individual field values like account ID, account name and account type. Now there might be some accounts which are not having any account type so for that it will print null. So that's how you can write down a specific SQL query and see the result in a query editor on the VS code using the scripts folder and you can utilize it in an Apex class as well. That marks the end of this video. See you soon in the next video. Till then, thank you and take care.